The session is called to order. Please rise for the singing of the national anthem. standing for a few moments of silent prayer. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we call the role of members. Secretary General is directed to call the roll of members. Roll call of members, honorable representatives Abaya, Abayon, Abellanosa, Abu, Abueg, Asharon, Akop, Acosta, Acosta Alba. Adiong, Advincula, Agarao, Agabao, Aglipay Biliar, Albano, Alcala, Alejano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez Franz, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Andaya, Angara Castillo, Antonino, Antonio, Aquino Magsaysay, Aragones, Arbison, Arcilias, Arenas, Atienza, Aumentado, Bagao, Bagarsing, Bagilat, Banal, Barbers, Barsaga, Batawil, Batokabe, Bautista Bandigan, Belaro, Belmonte Feliciano, Belmonte Jose Christopher, Belmonte Ricardo, Benitez, Bernos, Bertiz, Biazon, Billones, Biron, Bolilia, Bondoc, Bordado, Bravo Anthony, Bravo Maria Vida, Brosas, Bulut Bektang, Cagas, Kalalang, Calderon, Calixto Rubiano, Caminero, Campos, Canama, Cari, Casilao, Castelo, Castro Prans, Castro Apred, Catamco, Cayetano, Celeste, Serapica, Ceriles, Chavez, Chipeco, Co, Coanco, Coliantes, Cortés, Cortuna, Cosalan, 
Krisologo, Kua, Kwaresma, Kueva, Dalipe, Datol, Daza, De Jesus, De Venetia, De Vera, De Pensor, Del Mar, Del Rosario, De Los Montalia, De Maporo Abdullah, De Maporo Muhammad, Duabit, Durano, D, Elago, Enverga, Erise, Erigel, Ermita Buhain, Escudero, Espina, Espino, Estrella, Eusebio, Ebardoni, Fariñas, Fernando, Ferrer Juliet, Ferrer Luis, Feriol, Florendo, Flores, Fortun, Fortuno, Fentebelia, Garbin, Garcia Gwendolyn, Garcia Jose Enrique, Garcia Albano, Garin Oscar, Garin Sharon, Gasataya, Gachalian, Heron, Go Ana Cristina, Go Mark, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzalez Alexandria, Gonzalez Aurelio, Gonzalez Fernando, Goriseta, Gullias, Hernandez, Herrera D, Hopper, Alos Jos, Javier, Ko, Konghun, Labad Labad, Lakson, Lagman, Lanete, Laugan, Lazatin, Liachon, Li, Lim Kai Shong, Lobregat, Lopez Benhar, Lopez Carlo, Lopez Manuel, Loyola, Makapagal Arroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Malapitan, Manalo, Mangawang, Mangudadato Suharto, Mangudadato Zahid, Marcoleta, Marcos, Marino, Marquez, Martinez, Matugas, Meliana, Mending, Mendoza, Mercado, Mirasol, Montoro, Nava, Nieto, Noel, Nograles Jericho, Nograles Carlo, Nolasco, Núñez Malañaon, Oaminal, Ocampo, Olivares, On Edwin, On Henry, Ortega Pablo, Ortega Bininola, Aquiao, Paduano, Palma, Pancho, Panganiban, Panotes, Papandayan, 
Pichai, Pimentel, Pineda, Plaza, Remisia Sagabas, Kimbo, Radaza, Ramirez Sato, Ramos, Relampagos, Rebilia, Roa Puno, Robes, Rocamora, Rodriguez Isidro, Rodriguez Maximo, Roman, Romero, Romualdez, Romualdo, Roque, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Sahali, Salceda, Salimbangon, Salo, Salon, Sambar, Sangkopan, Sandoval, Santos Recto, Sarmiento Cesar, Sarmiento Edgar Meri, Sabellano, Sema, Xiao, Silverio, Singson, Swansing Estrelita, Swansing Horacio, Suarez, C. Alvarado, Tambunting, San Angelina, San Milagrosa, San Cherny, Tejada, Tebes, Tianco, Ting, Tinio, Tolentino, Treñas, Tugna, Tupas, Ti, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Unico, Uy Juliet, Uy Rolando, Uy Barreta, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Velarde, Velasco, Velasco Caterra, Veloso, Vergara, Villa, Villapuerte, Villanueva, Villaraza Suarez, Villarica, Villarín, Violago, Yap Arthur, Yap Melesio, Yap Victor, Yu, Zamora Maria Carmen, Zamora Ronaldo, Zarate Subiri. Madam Speaker, the roll call shows that 197 members responded to the call. With 197 members responding to the call, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move for the deferment of the approval of the journal of the previous session. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Madam Speaker, I move that we now proceed with the reference of business and request the Secretary General be directed to read the titles of bills and resolutions on first reading, as well as communications and committee reports. Is there an objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. The Secretary General is so directed. Reference of business, bills on first reading, House Bill 7699, rationalizing the livestock industry. Representative Acosta Alba. To the Committee on Agriculture and Food. 
House Bill 7700, establishing the LTO District Office in Manolo, Portage, Bukidnon, Representative Acosta Alba. To the Committee on Transportation. House Bill 7701, strengthening the Comelec, Representative Tugna. To the Committee on Suffrage and Electoral Reforms. House Bill 7702, declaring the Battle of Easy Memorial Marker and National Military Shrine, Representative Loirendo. To the Committee on National Defense and Security. House Bill 7703, exempting from income tax compensation given to teachers for serving as members of the Electoral Board, Representative Castello. To the Committee on Ways and Means. House Bill 7704, amending Republic Act 10742, Representative Garbin, Batokabingko. To the Committee on Suffrage and Electoral Reforms. House Bill 7705, supporting modern biotechnology, Representative Macapagalaroyo. To the Committee on Agriculture and Food. House Bill 7706, requiring all national, regional, provincial government hospitals to establish, operate, and maintain a dialysis treatment center to indigent persons, Rep Representative Alcia Alvarado. To the Committee on Health. House Bill 7707, penalizing the act of money lending with interest by salary dispersing officers, Representative C. Alvarado. To the Committee on Civil Service and Professional Regulation and the Committee on Labor and Employment. House Bill 7708, increasing the bed capacity of the Cotabato Regional and Medical Center, Representative Hernandez. To the Committee on Health. House Bill 7709, providing for the establishment of a Manpower Development Institute in the 2nd District of South Cotabato, Representative Hernandez. To the Committee on Labor and Employment. House Bill 7710, declaring the Philippine Arena of Iglesia Ni Cristo as the sports capital of major sporting events, Representative C. Alvarado. To the Committee on Youth and Sports Development. House Bill 7711, providing for monetary compensation for the loss or destruction of residential houses and commercial buildings in Marawi City, Representative Bajong. To the Committee on Appropriations. House Bill 7712, amending Section 66 of Republic Act Number 9136, Representative Gomart. To the Committee on Energy. House Bill 7715, establishing an agritourism in Barangay Ujjawan, Solano, Nueva Vizcaya, Representative Quaresma. To the Committee on Agriculture and Food. House Bill 7716, exempting the Maritime Industry Authority from the coverage of Republic Act Number 678, Representative Manalo. To the Committee on Appropriations. House Bill 7718, prohibiting the manufacture, use, sale, and importation of cosmetic and personal care products with plastic microbeads, Representative Subiri. To the Committee on Ecology. House Bill 7719, extending the Barangay official eligibility to the SK officials, Representative Salceda. To the Committee on Suffrage and Electoral Reforms. House Bill 7720, naming the National Road from Crossing Airport Road and CA Fernandez Road as Vicente, General Vicente Alvarez Highway, Representative Lobregat. To the Committee on Public Works and Highways. House Bill 7721 to 7728, separating various national schools and extensions, Representative Calderon. To the Committee on Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 7729 and 7730, converting certain roads in Weber Isia to national roads, Representative Yolago. To the Committee on Public Works and Highways. House Bill 7731, limiting the liability of a cardholder for unauthorized transactions, Representative Marino. To the Committee on Banks and Financial Intermediaries. House Bill 7732, granting 100% tax exemption applicable to the honoraria, travel allowance, debt benefits, and medical assistance due to persons who render elect election service, Representative Bilaro. To the Committee on Ways and Means. Resolution, South Solution 1876, condemning the, strong, in the strongest terms, the, past, the killing of former Representative Giprano Prani Irigel, Representative Castello. To the Committee on Rules. House Resolution 1877, expressing the profound sense of loss of the House for the passing of former Senate President Edgardo Algara, Representative Castello. To the Committee on Rules. House Resolution 1878, calling for the House to study the possibility that a 50,000 hectare property located in General Lacar Quezon be declared as amiable, Representative Suarez. To the Committee on Natural Resources. House Resolution 1879, that the House Committee on Information and Communications Technology to investigate the rising complaints against the communication companies, Representative Bravo Anthony. To the Committee on Rules. House Resolution 1880, expressing profound condolences on the demise of former Congressman Yufranio Frani Chan Irigel, Representative Nieto. To the Committee on Rules. House Resolution 1881, the Committee on Dangerous Drugs, jointly with the Special Committee on Vehicle Recovery and Economic Development, to inquire on the reported smuggling of illegal drugs of the coastal waters of the provinces of Camarines Norte and Quezon, Representative Urico. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1882, expressing profound condolences and condemning in the untimely demise of the Honorable Eufranio C. Ergel, said Rivelarte.
to the Committee on Rules. House Resolution 1883, expressing profound condolences of the House and the demise of the Honorable Edgardo J. Angara, Representative Velarde. To the Committee on Rules. House Resolution 1884, calling for an investigation on the alleged discrimination of passengers going to and from the province of Nueva Vizcaya, Representative Guaresma. To the Committee on Rules. House Resolution 1886, conducting an urgent inquiry on the alleged anomalous 60 million advertisement deal between the DOT and BTAG Media Limited Inc., Representative Stino, Castro, and Serrates, Casillo, and Lago. To the Committee on Rules. House Solution 1887, conducting an inquiry on the status of implementation of the K-12 program, Representative Stino, Castro, and several others. To the Committee on Rules. House Joint Resolution 22, mandating the implementation of the second tranche of the SSS pension increase, effective January 1, 2019, Representative Sarati, Tino, and several others. To the Committee on Government, Enterprises, and Privatization. Communications, letter dated 15 March of Facilito C. De Vera, Executive Director, Philippine National Voluntary Service Coordinating Agency. To the Committee on Economic Affairs. Letter dated 10 April of Jose Walter R. Villafrente. To the Committee on Appropriations. Annual Audit Report of the Philippine Center for Harbor Post Harvest Development and Mechanization. To the Committee on Appropriations. Letter dated 16 April of Minerva A. Morales. To the Committee on Appropriations. Letter dated 21 April of Attorney Guillermo B. Acido. To the Committee on Appropriations. Letter dated 23 April of Ronald Giancarlo L. Quaderma, Quar Cardema. To the Committee on Appropriations. Letter dated 23 April, Francisco T. Duque III. To the Committee on Health. Letter dated April 23, Roman G. Del Rosario. To the Committee on Justice. Annual Audit Report on the Isabella State University. To the Committee on Appropriations. LGSF ADM Report on Fund Utilization and Status of Program Project Implementation. Attested by Norman D. Palacio. To the Committee on Appropriations. Committee reports, report number 747 on House Solutions 456 and privilege speech of the Honorable Halusos. To the Committee on Rules. Report number 748 on House Bill number 7761. To the Committee on Rules. Report number seven, report number 749 to 751 on House Bill number 7767 to 7769. To the Committee on Rules. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that you recognize the guests of Representative Jose Christopher Belmonte from the 6th District of Quezon City, Kagawad Nestor Estong Reyes from Barangay North, Fairview, Quezon City, Kagawad Marlon Mendoza, Nagkaisang Nayon, Quezon City, Mr. Janisho Salio, Board of Director of United North Fairview Homeowners Association. Welcome to the House of Representatives. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we proceed with the business of the day. Madam Speaker, I move that we consider House Bill number 7446 as contained in Committee Report number 683, submitted by the Committee on Small Business and, Ent and Entrepreneurship Development. And for this purpose, may I ask the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the bill. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. The Secretary General is so directed. House Bill Number 7446, an act providing a socialized microfinancing program for microenterprises, thereby promoting entrepreneurship. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the gentleman from the 1st District of Misamis Oriental, Representative Pedro Unabia. The Honorable Onabia is recognized. Madam Speaker, esteemed colleagues, mayong hapon kanatong tanan. Madam Speaker, may I move that the explanatory note of House Bill Number 7446 be considered as sponsorship speech. I so move. Madam Speaker, Madam we Speaker. join the gentleman from Misamis Oriental. Is there an objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. There being no interpolations, I move that we close the period of interpolations. Is there an objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. The period of interpolation is hereby closed. I move that we open the period of 
amendments. Is there an objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. The period of amendments is hereby opened. There being no committee amendments, I move that we close the period of committee amendments, Madam Chair, Madam Speaker. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the period of amendments is hereby closed. There being no individual amendments, Madam Speaker, I move that we terminate the period of individual amendments. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the, period, uh, the motion is approved. The period of individual amendments is hereby closed. I move that we close the period of amendments, Madam Speaker. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. The period of amendments is hereby closed. I move that we adopt House Bill number 7446, Madam Speaker. I move that we approve House Bill number 7446. Oh, yes. Uh, is there an objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. All those in favor, please say aye. All those against, please say nay. The ayes have it. House Bill 7446 is hereby approved on second reading. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, considering that copies of the journal of the previous session has been distributed to the members, I move that we approve journal number 82 of the previous session. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Journal number 82 for Tuesday, May 22 is hereby approved. Madam Speaker, I move that we suspend session. Session suspended. Madam Speaker, may we resume? Session is resumed. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize 
Representative by Sandra Sema of the 1st District of Maguindanao, who wishes to rise on a point of personal and collective privilege. The Honorable Sema is recognized. Kindly proceed. Madam Speaker, I rise on a matter of personal and coll collective privilege. I rise regarding the takeover of the barangay elections in Cotabato City by RoboCups. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, the May 14, 2018 barangay elections in Cotabato City was taken over by RoboCups. I call them RoboCups because they acted like robots. RoboCups who follow instructions other than the COMELEC general instructions in connection with the conduct of the barangay elections. Robocops who obey the whims and caprices of the PNP city director and the city election officer rather than the clear mandate of the law. As early as 3 o'clock in the morning on May 14, public school teachers who have been appointed and trained for election duty trooped to the city treasurer's office at the Cotabato City Hall to receive ballots, ballot box, and other election paraphernalia and serve as electoral boards. This is an opportunity for them to serve their country and help in ensuring clean, honest, and credible election. They have done this many times. The weakest among them have refused to serve. But those who are firm and steadfast have offered their day to serve their country. For the economically challenged teacher, this is an opportunity to augment their meager income and be paid 5,000 or 6,000 pesos, as the case may be, as an honorarium for their electoral duty. But when the teachers reached the city hall, PNP personnel were lined up as though there is a military junta. There had been no reports of destabilization, no report of breach of peace, no report of a difficult peace and order situation. But why are there so many policemen? Hindi ko alam kung papano sa inyo, pero sa amin at sa ibang lugar, nakakatakot kapag maraming polis. According to the policemen who were manning the gates of the city hall, only those serving as electoral boards are allowed to enter. The watchers were also initially barred from entering, but the teachers insisted that they would be serving. And since the policemen had no final list of those who would be serving, they hesitantly gave in to the teacher's persistence. The teachers rushed towards the door of the city hall. They were afraid that a little bit more delay and they cannot start the preliminaries to voting by 6 o'clock in the morning as required by law. But upon entering the treasurer's office, they were surprised to learn that police officers had already taken the election paraphernalia. They were replaced without reason. They were dismissed without notice. The robocops have already taken over from them, even though they are qualified, willing, and available to render election service. For what have they trained for the job? Ms. Madam Speaker, our election laws, rules, and regulations and the general instructions of the COMELEC are clear on the right of preference of public school teachers in the appointment of members of the electoral board. The qualified teachers possess good moral character and irreproachable reputation. They are registered voters, and so they have a stake in the honest result of the election. They should not be related to the candidates or to the other members within the fourth degree of affinity or consanguinity. Their names have been posted before the election so that anyone who has information as to their disqualification can object to their appointment. And more importantly, they have the experience and underwent rigid training for the job. Honorable colleagues, our election laws are clear in emphasizing that military personnel, including the PNP, will be called upon only when the peace and order situation in the area require their presence. They are supposed to stay 50 meters away from the polling place. In case of imminent danger, they can come, but not nearer 30 meters. 
This is because the military is the strongest, most potent establishment that can wrestle power from civilian authorities. They are not supposed to intervene in civilian affairs reserved to civilian authorities. This representation admits that the Comelec general instruction in, instruction in connection with the May 14, 2018 BSKE election allowed the deputization of uniformed personnel of the PNP. But said instructions require the concurrence of two conditions before they can be appointed. One, the peace and order in the area requires the appointment of PNP uniformed personnel. And two, when there are no qualified, willing, and available persons to render election service in the affected area based on the certification issued by highest officials or authorized representative of the DepEd, private school, and other national government agencies, and the local chapter of the citizens' arm or other CSOs and NGOs accredited by the COMELIC. As this representation has mentioned earlier, we have a good peace and order in Cotabato City. No less than Colonel James Yuri of the AFP Special Action Force has declared this. We have hundreds of teachers and other volunteers who are qualified, willing, and available to render election-related services. I have here the list of public school teachers and private school teachers who have been certified by DepEd as qualified, willing, and available. What is interesting, Madam Speaker, honorable colleagues, is that while some politicians have threatened the others, many teachers have boldly announced and signed their names that they are willing to replace those who may have withdrawn. What evidence of willingness do we need? When these teachers have trooped to the treasurer's office early morning on election day to obtain the election paraphernalia they will be needing for their job. Have they been asked if they would back out? No. Have they been asked if they changed their mind? No. The teachers have, grabbed, have been grabbed of their right to preference without reason and without notice. And who decided for their exclusion? The good election officer of Cotabato City, Attorney Michael Ignes, and the Cotabato City PNP Director Senior Superintendent Rolly Octavio. They have st substituted the clear mandate of the election law and the COMELEC general instructions for their personal whims and caprices. And of course, this tandem cannot synchronize their action without somebody pulling the strings. Whoever was behind this flagrant violation of our election law will be revealed if we conduct an investigation in aid of legislation so that this will not happen again in the future and in other places. Madam Speaker, honorable colleagues, why do I need to talk about this here in the August Chamber? I am speaking out not just because of the violation of the preference of teachers or civilians in the electoral board, I am speaking out because the evil which the law has intended to prevent happened in my city. First of all, the appointment of PNP uniform personnel was done not only in a few isolated barangay, but in all barangays where the candidates are opposed to the mayor. Second, Appointments are given like a blank check. The election officer, Attorney Ignes, has already signed the appointment, and all the appointee would have to do is write his name in the blank space intended for the name of the appointee, devoid of any screening for qualification and solemnity of an oath. I have here a copy of said blank appointment. Third, when the Purnong Barangay candidate of the mayor was losing, the electoral board headed by a uniformed PNP personnel ran away with the election returns, took refuge in the city hall, and turned over the altered return after nine long hours. Fourth, the PNP uniformed personnel acting as chairman of the electoral board together with their men required the watchers to step out of the room 
and filled out the election returns as if they are in an art class. I have a video of this art class. Fifth, the Barangay Board of Canvassers composed of PNP uniformed personnel sporting blank appointments instead of 6 o'clock in the evening of May convened only in the morning of May 15 after the snatch election returns have resurfaced. There was no notice to the party sent before the Barangay Board of Canvassers convened. The PNP chairman of the canvassing board instructed the chairman of the clustered precincts to simply pass their unsealed and newly altered election returns, file them on the table, and started canvassing them. No envelopes were displayed as election returns were naked when they came, On so naked will they be canvassed. No seal was removed, for the election returns came without a seal. And as the chairman was about to canvass the naked returns, a lawyer from a candidate objected to the canvassing of the election return as they are all unsealed and their authenticity and due execution are questionable. But as if hearing nothing, the RoboCop proceeded to canvass all the election returns and proclaimed the candidate of the mayor. Madam Speaker, honorable colleagues, this is what happened when the laws that we pass here are not respected. It is important, Madam Speaker, that not only we must have a clear-cut policy on the involvement of uniformed PNP personnel in the electoral process, the manner of implementation of said policy must also be closely monitored. For there are people who can use the PNP for their ulterior motive to mock our electoral process. This happened in my district last election. This can happen again in other places of the country in the elections to come. We have to investigate this before it is too late. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we refer the point of personal collective privilege of Representative Baisema to the Committee on Rules. The privilege speech is so referred. Madam Speaker, I move for the change of referral of the following measures. House Bill Numbers 110 and 6968, relocating the seat of government from Metro Manila, from the Committee on the Revision of Laws to the Committee on Government Reorganization. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Said change uh, of referral is hereby approved. Another item is House Resolution Number 1777, Resolution Expressing the Sense of the House demanding the immediate resignation of Sandra Cam and the initiation of contempt proceedings against her from the Committee on Rules to the Committee on Justice. Is there any objection? Uh, hearing none, the motion is approved. Madam Speaker, I move that we suspend session. Session is suspended.
Session is resumed. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that you recognize Representative Ariel Casilla from Partilis Anakpawis for his point of personal collective privilege. The Honorable Ariel Casilla is recognized. Kindly proceed.
Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise on a personal and collective privilege with regards to the first anniversary declaration of martial law in Mindanao. Sa araw na ito, mga kapwa mambabatas, ginugunita di lamang ng mamaya ng Marawi at ng Mindanao, kundi ng buong bansa, ang pagdeklara ng martial law sa Mindanao. Sa tingin po at punto de vista ng kinatawang ito, di makatarungan, mapangabuso, sa kapangyarihan at mapanupil na pagdeklara ang martial law sa Mindanao. Sa Marawi City at kanugnog ng mga probinsya, ginuginitan nila ang malagim na pagkatake ng mga panatikong teroristang IS. At ang reaksyon ng Armed Forces of the Philippines na walang patung patumanggang binomba ang syudad mula sa lupa at impapawid. Reaksyon na walang pinagkaiba at mas masahol pa sa terorismong ginawa ng mga teroristang IS. Sa katunayan, Madam Speaker at mga kapwa kinatawan, ginamit ang Marawi Siege upang bigyang katwiran ang pag-implementa ng martial law di lamang sa Marawi, kundi sa buong Mindanao. Mag-iisang taon na ang pagpapalawig nito na nagresulta ng mga samot-saring pang-aabuso sa karapatan ng mga sibilyan at iba pang mga sektor ng ating lipunan. Ayon sa AFP mismo, tapos na ang banta ng terorismo ng IS sa Marawi City. Ngunit bakit patuloy ang walang habas na paglabag sa karapatang pantao na ginagawa ng mga pwersa ng AFP sa iba't ibang bahagi ng Mindanao? Nitong nakaraang Pebrero at Abril, nagkaroon ng dalawang international fact-finding mission sa Mindanao na nilahokan mismo ng kinatawang ito at iba pang membro ng makabayan. Hindi tulad sa depiksyon ng gobyerno na uma umano'y tahimik at mapayapa ang Mindanao sa ilalim ng martial law, takot ang nililikha nito, lalo na sa mga magsasaka, katutubong lumad, mga manggagawa at maragtang lungsod na mayroong mga kanya-kanyang pakikibakang lokal para igiit ang kanilang mga sektoral na karapatan at karaingan. Personal na nasaksihan ng kinatawang ito ang harassment sa pamamagitan ng sunod-sunod na mga checkpoint na ginawa mga, ng mga elemento ng militar sa aming grupo upang i-verify ang mga kaso ng paglabag sa karapatang pantao. Labing tatlong beses na hinarang ang aming teams na nagpunta sa Karaga sa pangunguna ni kagalang-galang na kinatawan Rep. Kaloy Sarate sa Northern Mindanao at Southern Mindanao Region sa pangunguna naman ng kinatawang ito. Madam Speaker at mga kapwa kinatawan, halos hindi magkaiba ang dinaranas pangunahin ng mga kapatid nating mga magsasaka at katutubo sa ilalim ng martial sa Mindanao. Pinaparatangan silang mga NPA supporter. Albeit sila ay mga terrorist supporter. Sa Southern Mindanao, Madam Speaker, may halos mahigit anim na put anim na individual ang biktima ng extrajudicial killings. Sa Karaga po ay may sampu. Ito ay noong maipatupad ang batas militar sa mga rehiyon ng Mindanao. Pangunahing mga biktima ay pawang mga membro at aktibong leader ng mga progresibong grupong lokal sa kanikaniyang mga rehiyon. May mga kaso din ng sarpilitang pagsuko. Ayon sa report ng AFP, halos 6,000 na sa nakaraang 6 na buwan ang naipasuko mula sa hanay ng NPA. Pero resulta ng mga ng pagfinding mission na ito sa Southern Mindanao Region pa lamang ay may mahigit na apat na raan na pwersahan at sapilitang pinasuko at ginawang pinisenta ng mga NPA o NPA combatants and supporters. Ang tawag po ng kinatawang ito, Madam Speaker, ay fake surrenderies. Patunay lamang ito na ginagawang gatasang baka ng pamunuan ng AFP, ang pondo ng gobyerno sa ilalim ng integration program na bilyon-bilyon ang pondo. Madam Speaker at mga kapwa kinatawan, Ang sino mang umaasa sa kapayapaan sa Mindanao o sa buong bansa nang pagpataw ng martial law ay nagkakamali 
dahil ang marshalo sa Mindanao ay hindi na laban sa kaaway ng ating gobyerno. Ito'y naging mapanupil na gera sa mga sibilyan at ordinaryong mamamayan na nanggigiit at gumigiit ng kanilang mga batayang karapatan sa lupa, sahod at iba pang mga panlipunang serbisyo. At habang ang ating mga mamamayan ay naliligalig sa mga paglabag ng kanilang karapatang pantao, walang marsyalo na makapagpapahupa ng kanilang pakikibaka at walang kapayapaan na dadapo sa Mindanao at sa buong bansa. Kaya, Madam Speaker, nananawagan ang kinatawang ito na tignan muli ang desisyon ng kapulungang ito na nagpalawig sa Marsyalo hanggang December 2018. Pakinggan naman po natin ang mga ordinaryong mamayan ng Mindanao, ang mga magsasaka, ang mga katutubong lumad, mga kapatid nating bangsamoro, mga kabataan at kababaihan, na dahil sa pang-aabuso, sila ngayon sumisigaw, itigil na ang marsyalo sa Mindanao. Mapagpalayang pagbati po at hapon sa inyong lahat. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move for suspension. Session is suspended. Session resume. Madam Speaker, I move that we refer the matter of personal and collective privilege raised by the Honorable Casilao to the Committee on Rules. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Madam Speaker, may we greet the guests of our Honorable Speaker, Pantaleon Alvarez. They are from the Department of Education. Region 11 office. They are as follows Dr. Janet Veloso, Dr. Maria Fe Sibuan, Dr. Mayan Humuad, and Dr. Darwin Suya. Does 
guests of the speaker are hereby recognized. Welcome to the House of Representatives. Madam Speaker, I move that we suspend session. Session suspended.
Session is resumed. Madam Speaker, I move that we consider House Bill 7742 as contained in Committee Report Number 741, submitted by the Committee on Banks and Financial Intermediaries. And for this purpose, may I ask that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the bill. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. The Secretary General is so directed. House Bill Number 7742. An act reinforcing the corporate viability of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, strengthening its monetary and financial stability functions, and enhancing its regula regulatory powers. Amending for the purpose of Public Act Number 7653, otherwise known as the New Central Bank Act. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that you recognize a gentleman from the Lone District of Eastern Summer, Representative Ben Everdone, for his sponsorship speech. The Honorable Ben Verdone is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. May I request that the uh, explanatory note of House Bill 7742 be adopted as my uh, sponsorship speech, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I join the gentleman from Eastern Summer with this motion. Is there an objection? Madam Hearing Speaker. None? Madam the, Speaker. Yes. Well, I'm not objecting. And. Uh, but uh, I would like to make it a record 
that uh, there is no explanatory note attached to the bill for second reading. May we request the leadership of the House that in subsequent measures, we sh the, it should be a policy that the explanatory note should be attached to the bills for second reading, because many authors or sponsors would manifest that they are adopting the explanatory note as a responsive speech. But there is no explanatory note attached. Could we get an assurance from the House leadership that uh, in subsequent measures, before we take up a bill on second reading, the members of the House should be furnished copies of the explanatory note of the bills scheduled for second reading? Majority Leader. Yes, we take note of the manifestation of the representative from, and we assure him um, that we will comply and attach um, the, the request as requested by Representative Legman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, can, would the Majority Leader reiterate the previous motion? Yes, I move that we are joining the, manifest, the motion of the of Representative Ben Everdonet that we include, that we use the explanatory note as his sponsors at speech. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, there being no member who wishes to interpolate, I move that we terminate the period of interpolation. I'm sorry. I withdraw my motion. I am not opposed to this measure, but I would like to get some clarifications from the distinguished uh, author and sponsor. I move that we recognize Representative Lagman. Representative Lagman. Will, will the distinguished uh, sponsor and author uh, entertain some clarificatory questions? Uh, certainly, Madam Speaker, from the learned, uh, from our learned colleague from Albay. Since we are increasing the capitalization uh, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. May we know presently what is the balance or remaining capitalization of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas as originally enacted? Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, it has been fully paid uh, already. Uh, the balance is 50 billion pesos, uh, Madam Speaker. It has been uh, Paid uh, 10 billion in 1993 when the uh, Banco Central <coughs> Act was enacted, and in November 4, 2011, another 10 billion was uh, appropriated. Uh, on December 28, 2012, another 20 billion, and in January 2, 2014, another 10 billion, Madam Speaker. Uh, well, uh, the original capitalization of Banco Central is 50 billion. That is uh, correct, uh, Madam uh, Speaker. And uh, we are uh, told or informed by the distinguished sponsor that this 50 billion has been fully subscribed and paid by the national government. That is correct, Madam Speaker. My question is, how much of that paid capitalization is still remains? unused or unexpended by the Banco Central. Uh, Madam Speaker, actually, uh, uh, considering that uh, the BSP also incurs uh, losses, the 50 billion is already depleted. So there is no more balance remaining out of that 50 billion original capitalization? That is correct, uh, Madam Speaker. How much of that 50 billion had been lost because of losses? Uh, 
Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, the committee does not have a, a figure of how much of that 50 billion uh, uh, capitalization went to uh, losses. But uh, we have on records that the BSP has a total uh, losses of about 66 billion, uh, Madam Speaker. Total losses of 66 billion? Yes. Um, out of a capitalization of 50 billion? That is correct, uh, Madam Speaker. In other words, that 50 billion uh, original capitalization has been washed out? by losses it theoretically was from uh, the explanation of the distinguished chair, uh, chairman? Um, uh, well, uh, in a way, yes, but uh, it was part of the capitalization, but uh, it was used also to generate revenues, Madam Speaker. Uh -huh. That's why, in fact, uh, the present uh, total uh, uh, capital accounts of the BSP stands at 4.5 trillion. Um, uh, pesos, Madam Speaker. Uh, can we get the data, Madam Speaker, distinguished uh, chairman, of uh, the nature of the 66 billion losses when these were incurred and uh, we how they were considered as losses? Uh, we will provide uh, the distinguished uh, gentleman, uh, Madam Speaker. Because uh, it's very important that this chamber and the public should know what happened to the operations of the central bank that a total of 66 billion had been lost. So when can we get the data on these losses? Madam uh, Chairman, distinguished sponsor. Madam Speaker, uh, I was, the committee was assured that we can provide the uh, distinguished gentleman uh, the data tomorrow, uh, Madam Speaker. Well, uh, pending submission, Mr. Chairman, Madam Speaker, of uh, the uh, nature, the causes, and the time, as well as why these were considered losses. Can we be permitted to suspend our interpolation? We are not delaying the passage of this measure, but this, are, this is a very important measure, and we are capitalizing an additional amount of 200 billion uh, for the Banco Central of Filipinas. At least we should be able to know why losses have been incurred, when they were incurred, how they were incurred, and why they are considered as losses. So well, may I move that we, sus that we suspend consideration of the bill pending submission of this very important data? Majority oh. Leader. Uh, I move that we suspend session. Session suspended. Madam Speaker, session is shown. I move that we suspend consideration of House Bill Number 7742.
I see any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Madam Speaker, I move that we suspend session. Session suspended.
Session resume. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, in accordance with the rules governing inquiries and aid of legislation, I move that we refer the following House resolutions to appropriate committees. House Resolution 1798 to the Committee on Natural Resources. House Resolution 1799 to the Committee on Transportation. House Resolution 1801 to the Committee on Public Order and Safety. H.R. 1806 to the Committee on Tourism, H.R. 1808 to the Committee on Labor and Employment, H.R. 1810 to the Committee on Energy, H.R. 1815 to the Committee on Public Order and Safety, H.R. 1819 to the Committee on Dangerous Drugs, H.R. 1822 to the Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability, House Resolution 1823 to the Committee on Labor and Employment, House Resolution 1824 to the Committee on Ways and Means, House Resolution 1825 to the Committee on Higher and Technical Education. House Resolution 1826 to the Committee on Labor and Employment. And House Resolution 1839 to the Committee on Public Works and Highways. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. The aforementioned House Resolutions are referred to the corresponding committee. Majority Leader? I move that we suspend session. Session suspended.
Madam Speaker, session resume. Madam Speaker, I move that we take up additional reference of business and request the Secretary General be directed to read the titles of the bills and resolutions on first reading as well as communications and committee reports. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Secretary General is so directed. Additional reference of business committee reports. Report committee report number seven five two and House Bill number seven seven three three seven seven three. To the Committee on Rules. Committee Report Number 753 and House Bill Number 7449. To the Committee on Rules. Report Number 754 and House Bill Number 7774. To the Committee on Rules. Committee Report Number 755 and House Bill Number 7775. To the Committee on Rules. Committee Report Number 756 and House Bill Number 7776. To the Committee on Rules.
Report number 757, House Bill number 7777. To the Committee on Rules. Report number 758 on House Bill number 6475. To the Committee on Rules. Report number 759 on House Bill number 7003. To the Committee on Rules. House Bill number 7, Committee Report number 760 on House Bill number 7778. To the Committee on Rules. Majority Ma Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we suspend session. Session suspended. Wala na po. Wala na po. Kasi ito yung talag ko. Saka ako lang naman po na nag-absorb ko. Okay. Okay. Madam Speaker. Session is shown. Session. I move that we suspend session. Session suspended. Madam Speaker. Session resume. Madam Majority Speaker, leader. I move that you recognize the guests of the Honorable Michael Romero from One Pac-Man Party List, Mark Richardson and Glenn Haywood from TW Power Services. The guests of the Honorable Michael Romero are recognized. Welcome to the House of Representatives. Madam Speaker, I move that we consider House Bill number 7003 contained in committee report number 759 submitted by the committee on local government and may ask the secretary general be directed to read the title of the bill the secretary general is so directed house bill number 7003 an act dividing barangay adams in the municipality of adams province of ilocos norte into two distinct and independent barangays to be known as barangay adan and Barangay Bukarot. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that you recognize um, Representative Pedro Acharon from the 1st District of South Cotabato for his and General Santa City for his sponsorship speech. The Honorable Chairman Acharon is recognized. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. The uh, approval for uh, House Bill number 7003 is hereby sought and hereby request Madam Speaker, that the uh, uh, experimental note be considered as a sponsorship uh, speech, uh, Madam Speaker. I join the motion of Representative Acheron. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Madam Speaker, there being no member who wishes to interpolate a sponsor, I move that we terminate the period of sponsorship and debate. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Madam Speaker, I move that we open the period of amendments. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. 
Madam Speaker, there being no committee amendments, I move that we terminate the period of committee amendments. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Madam Speaker, there being no individual amendments, I move that we terminate the period of individual amendments. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Madam Speaker, I move that we terminate the period of amendments. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Madam Speaker, I move that we vote on second reading, House Bill Number 7003. I so move. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those against, please say nay. The ayes have it. House Bill 7003 is hereby approved on second reading. Madam Speaker, I move that we consider House Bill Number 7778 as contained in Committee Report 760, submitted by the Committee on Local Government. And for this purpose, may I ask the Secretary General to read the title of the bill? The Secretary General is so directed. House Bill Number 7778, an act apportioning the province of Isabela into six legislative districts. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that you recognize Representative Pedro Acheron from the 1st District of South Cotabato and General Santos City for his sponsorship speech. Chairman uh, Pedro Acheron is hereby recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Approval on uh, House Bill Number 778 is hereby sought, and we also uh, move forward to uh, consider the explanatory note as the uh, sponsorship uh, speech. Uh, Madam Speaker. I join the motion of the representative of Charon. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Madam Speaker, there being no member who wishes to interpolate a sponsor, I move that we terminate the period of sponsorship and debate. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Madam Speaker, I move that we open the period of amendments. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Madam Speaker, there being no committee amendments, I move that we terminate the period of committee amendments. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Madam Speaker, there being no individual amendments, I move that we terminate the period of individual amendments. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Madam Speaker, I move that we close the period of amendments. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Madam Speaker, I move that we vote on second reading, House, no House Bill Number 7778. All I those salute. in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those against, please say nay. The ayes have it. House Bill 7778 is approved on second reading. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we adjourn until Monday, May 28th at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Session adjourned.